However, this is really talking about um, you know, risk CPU um, 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 performance. What has actually uh, been a revolutionary thing is that the rise of um, GPU. So GPU is graphical processing units. Um, for those of you, maybe like me, who play video games, uh, you realize actually uh, that's a very important component because video games use a lot of graphics uh, and you, you want to be able to refresh your, 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 your graphics kind of quickly and you have dedicated processor to, to do that. And these are graphical processing uh, units. They're not universal processor. They're only very good with very narrow um, set of things. However, one, one feature is that um, you can run many, many of these things and then they can be made massively parallel. So what they're very good at is essentially you know, in something like uh, Monte Carlo simulation, and that is really, really big in finance, um, but also machine learning. That is also something that requires a lot of parallel compu computation. So uh, I'll give you an example that, that we've been training a, a deep learning uh, model at, at AHL. When we use um, CPU, basically um, um, one experiment, it took 13 days to basically to run. When we replace that with GPU, it basically finished in eight hours. Um, you know, this, this represents almost 40 times boost in performance. And they're cheap. They're not actually expensive uh, because they're all not big, um, developed uh, for basically gaming machine uh, in the past. So finally, my last topic, um, let me just, it all leads to really uh, machine learning. The big data, the rise of computing power, uh, really the open source um, um, revolution, which actually provide a lot of the tools that are um, uh, very useful for basically doing machine learning um, and work. And these are not you know, possible, really, even going back 10 years ago, because we didn't have the data, we didn't have the computing power, um, et cetera. So um, what is machine learning? Machine learning is not AI. AI is a broader term. Machine learning is one approach and one of the um, techniques that people use uh, in AI. However, it's probably one of the most successful uh, approach and it's been uh, widely adopted. Um, so where do you actually see uh, machine learning being used? Uh, I'm sure all of you will have uh, type searches uh, in whether or not it's in Google or, 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 or Naver. Um, and you, know, you, you have seen basically uh, they are trying to predict uh, and what you're trying to look for. So before you actually finish your sentences, it basically trying to guess what it is. The underlying technique that they use to do that is basically machine learning. It's trying to learn, you know, when people type this particular word, what typically uh, do they want? So it's trying to give you a suggestion. Um, you know, you've all kind of heard about kind of automated cars. I mean, I've seen that there are automated cars in, you know, being built kind of everywhere, and it's again using machine learning algorithm to learn how to drive, how to basically drive safely. Um, you know, the, at, the bot at the bottom here, you know, there's actually uh, uh, something I will talk about a bit later. Really, you know, you can use machine learning to teach the computer how to play games, and you can actually um, do that better than humans. So, um, he, he, here's the chart uh, that Google basically um, um, published. They've been benchmarking really uh, a few a few different video games, and, and, and basically uh, you can see that um, towards the top, basically a lot of different games, machine now can actually play it better than humans. Um, not all games, but basically quite a lot of games, and, and, and we'll see one example uh, later. And when I talk about games, um, and given we're in Korea, I have to talk about the, the Go, um, and, and you, you've, you've seen this sort of uh, you know, a couple of years ago, uh, it was a surprise to people that actually uh, machine can now beat uh, some of the top humans in, in a complicated games like Go. Um, and not just Go, um, they're now making advances and, you know, into playing, say, poker games. So Carnegie Mellon University uh, computer have been sort of winning kind of matches uh, in online kind of poker games. Um, and you know, robots, AI, can now actually do um, um, diff, you know, robotics. And, and, and in legal profession, they've been using um, machine learning to try to, try to basically um, sort out the data that is relevant and passages and, and uh, particular case law that's particularly useful for the lawyer so that can, you can save them time. However, clearly a lot of people are really talking about, you know, is AI going to kind of take over the world and replace 
I mean, I, I'm, I think I'm more uh, um, optimistic about that. I don't think actually that will, uh, that will take place, but we can talk about that a bit later. Um, but definitely uh, even Wall Street and finance people uh, like ourselves are, are definitely looking at this and wondering kind of whether, you know, what we have to change in order not to kind of stop uh, the robots basically taking over our job. So I'm going to show you a very quick uh, video and just to show how this machine sort of um, um, can work. So I don't know how many of you have actually been playing video games you know, since the 80s, um, so I, I have, and this was probably one of my favorite games called Breakout. The objective is very simple, you know, you try to basically uh, break through the walls and, and so um, the computer, what you what what can see is basically the score at the top. It knows it can move the paddle uh, at the bottom uh, side by side. And that's it. That's all it knows. The objective of the computer is basically learn to play the game in order to maximize the score at to on the top. So the, uh, the scientists have given the computer um, um, th this game, allow him to play many different games and try to uh, let it learn. So you can see at the beginning, really, the computer's not doing very well. It just basically randomly can move the paddle. However, by about 400 sort of uh, training exercise, it, it's trying to, it has learned already how to kind of get the ball back to, the, um, uh, um, to win. Even more amazing is that you know, towards the end, what it also learned that the quickest way to win a game is basically to create a channel at the edge of the, um, of the screen and allow the, 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 the ball to basically go and bounce between the, the top, the ceiling and, and, and the wall. And that will allow them to, to maximize the score in the quickest time. So you know, this, is, this is done by uh, Google DeepMind. You can see basically a, um, um, you know, how computer really, it's quite amazing how, how it can really learn these things really, really quickly. So in terms of what we do, what we use, um, um, use is we can use it in automated trading, create better trading system, allowing ourselves to create algorithms that can execute better. But I think even for human investor, um, so we do have discretionary managers who actually look at uh, data and making decisions themselves. In the world of big data, uh, we can use machine learning to try to um, sift out and, and filter all the different news and pick out the most important information for human. Human beings simply cannot basically go through all the Twitter feed, all the social media to try to digest so much data. Um, but having said that, it, is quite, it has been very difficult trying to make machine learning basically work in, in finance. So I'll try to explain why. So there are a few challenges. Number one, um, if you're trying to recognize handwriting, the signal is quite strong. It's pretty clear. You can see what's, what's going on. Um, you know, so the computer can actually uh, map out you know, the, 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 the um, actual lines pretty clearly. But when you actually look at finance, this is the data we see. So here we, we can see um, on the y-axis is basically what S&P will do in the next period. On the x-axis is basically one of the, um, the indicators that, that we monitor. There's some signal in there, but it's extremely noisy. The analogy is basically, it's a bit like you know, trying to recognize the word three, but actually in an extremely noisy environment. So that's, um, that's already kind of, uh, it, it's one of the challenges. But even more, um, finance data is not stationary. So, um, you know, people write a three, they, they typically can write it in, in this orientation. In finance, what happens basically, the regime might change. So you then have to um, suddenly, you know, people change the, the financial market characteristics actually changes. You need to try to detect and try to understand you know, how this actually might happen, how do you learn from it. Um, I think a final um, challenge is, is actually um, um, quite interesting. Is, so here we have a stock market and just before the um, Japan um, earthquake uh, a few years back. And um, you know, in our training models, you know, we, we look at the prices and then basically um, we feed into our, our model and, this, and then we decide what to, what to do. So, and then the market um, dropped uh, a lot, you know, over the, the um, after the earthquake. The question is, do, do you, do, can we know, do we know what the black box will do? Can we feel comfortable that basically our machine will operate correctly under such extreme um, circumstances? So that, so, so this comfort level, I think, is, is probably the biggest challenge. People just don't trust machine. It's very hard to trust machine completely. Um, that much. So 
the way we try to kind of complement what we, what we do is basically we've been collaborating with Oxford University and, and the machine learning department, and we have a research team that's based uh, you know, in the same department that we can share ideas, because really machine learning um, is way more advanced in f um, academic field outside of finance. So for finance people, you can learn a lot from basically going to talk to the engineers who actually understand all this uh, latest uh, machine learning technique. Um, give you one quick example about the difference of machine learning algorithm versus traditional um, um, algo. So we have a trading model that's basically trying to uh, predict trends, and basically, you know, when trend goes up, we think the trend will continue. So in, if you look at over here, you can see that basically the S&P in this period have been going up in general. There's a long-term trend. Very recently, it has sort of come down a little bit. Um, usually, that would mean the two um, signals would cancel each other, so you end up with somewhat a neutral position. However, the machine learning algorithm would try to look at all the historical data and try to understand um, what might actually be um, a, uh, the likely response, and it can be rather complex. So sometimes, basically, short, strong long-term trend and, and a weak um, opposite short-term trend could actually mean the market might be going up. And you know, this complex model is basically what machine learning is very good at. It's picking up a model that basically um, human beings simply normally can't, I won't think of. But finally, let me just um, give you a caution uh, in terms of machine learning. Machine learning is not magic. I mean, there are really um, um, a lot of things you have to be wary about um, to understand it properly before you actually use it. So here we have an example of um, a few images that, um, uh, as we know, computers are very good at recognizing images. So you, know, you can recognize there's a starfish, there's an electric guitar, and that's a centipede. However, the same algorithm will also say that the pattern over here, that is a starfish, that's an electric guitar, and this kind of noisy th picture over there, that's a centipede. So, Computers sometimes will still get it wrong, but it's quite rare. In fact, the computer in this case actually think that it has, it's 99.9% .9 certain that basically these pictures represent uh, um, the, the, the label. And there are other examples like that. So a human being can easily see that, in, um, you know, which one is a ping pong ball, which one isn't a ping pong ball. Machine can be fooled in some very rare circumstances. Doesn't happen often, it will ha but it will happen. And the way we, we can address this is, is um, I'm trying to understand what goes on. So here you have an example of, you know, there's a picture over here, and you try to recognize which one, um, you know, which, which, which person is this. It is using a deep learning uh, um, um, framework. But, well, let's say you have this picture over here, and the computer basically say that, look, it recognizes that I'm Al Pacino. Why, right? You, you, you need to understand what is going on. So. Um, in a, deep net, in, in a deep learning network, you can actually look at how it constructs its decisions. So it first basically trying to recognize uh, edges, um, and then try to group things together, and it may recognize a nose, a face, um, a, an eye, a ear. And finally, it, it um, trying to work out where the nose and eyes are arranged. So by looking at this, we can, and let's say the computer actually did pick me as our Chino, we can understand why, why they do that. Is it because I have the same facial feature as Al Pacino, or maybe as we share the same eyebrow or something. So this understanding, I think, is vital uh, if we were to use finance, uh, use machine learning in, in investment like we do. So to, to conclude, um, I think technology innovation is crucial for um, asset management, just like many other industry. Um, I think open source is something that, that is, uh, has been a, a major contributor to, to productivity and also um, this how uh, good technologists um, like to work today. Big data and computing power really have transformed um, our ability to uh, analyze data and also um, uh, allow uh, algorithms like machine learning uh, to, to flourish. However, in order to use them safely, you need to spend time and understand what, can be, what, what is uh, possible under machine learning, what are, what are the drawbacks, um, and that understanding is crucial to, to um, make the maximum use of uh, machine learning. And finally, my belief is that um, machine learning AI you know, will be a very good companion to, uh, to human beings. So um, I see robots and machine not as a threat, but I'm seeing that as sort of partners that can allow us to basically do our job better. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wong. Thank you, Mr. Wong.